This week I met a man who told me that his church was running dry, running out, running out of ideas. And we as of many churches go through dry patches. The title of my message this morning is that God never runs out and God is never dry. I was thinking and contemplating this comment from a man that had just recently walked out of the morning service. I was thinking of the things that do run out. Money runs out, food runs out, time runs out, cars run out, warranties run out, insurance policies run out, specials at the supermarket run out, people run out, and people run out and die. And die. They run out of time. Got good news, folks. God never runs out, and God's never dry. If you've got a Bible, John chapter 7, 37 to 39. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anybody thirsts, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the scripture said, out of his heart will run rivers. Of living water. You know, it's a timely reminder that we need to focus on the eternity of God. A God that never runs out and never runs out of ideas, never runs out of blessings, never runs out of healings, never runs dry, never runs out. A God that's all sufficient, a God that's non exhaustible, a God that is high as the heavens. And it's possibly be elevated beyond all of our imagination, beyond all of our strength and all of our own ideas and all of our own resources. A God that has all the solutions to the problems of life. The all-sufficient one, the God that's free. He has no needs outside of himself. He's completely internally sufficient. The all-sufficient one, El Shaddai. That he is more than willing to overflow us with the rivers of pleasure and overflow our souls with living water that never shall run dry to those that diligently seek him. There is a river, folks, that never runs dry. It should never be a church service that come out of and you say, we're going through a dry patch. And here we have a God that is so full of grace from an inexhaustible fountain that never runs dry and that he's more and more willing to overshower us with these blessings that we don't deserve from above on a daily basis. The only way that we as mere men can please God is to allow us to, us to shower us with the rivers of living water is not by heap, heaping up lots and lots of human labour by works, because it's not by works are you redeemed, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ that came, because there is nothing that we can give God or do for God. Because God is all sufficient. The only way that we can please God is by falling on our face and our faith, and he is a living water and, surf and surfacing, and saying that this was the most refreshing drink we've ever had and say thank you God for the springs of living water that you have drenched my soul in from the word of God and there is to be a song there is a river of that of life that flows from deep within there is a fountain that frees the soul from sin come to this water there is a vast supply there's a river that shall never run dry folks we should never come out of a church, church service and say we're going through a dry patch and Acts 17.25, and he is not served by human hands, as if he needs us. God doesn't need us. He himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. For even the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Folks, we don't serve God. God serves us. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has been the counsel of the Lord? Nobody. Nobody can counsel God. Who can advise God? Who can give God advice? 
who was ever who was ever given to God that God should repay them? The answer is that you can't repay God. He has no need of nothing. For from him and through him and for him are all things exist. To him be glory for ever and ever. I have no need of a bull from your stall. I have no need of your works or of your goats from your pens. For every animal in the forest and all the cattle on a thousand hills and all the birds in the mountains and the insects in the fields are mine. And if I was hungry, I would not be bothered telling you for the world is mine and all that is in it. Do I eat the flesh of bulls and goats or drink the blood of goats? Sacrifice thanks offerings to other gods. Fulfill out your bows to the highest and call on me in the day of trouble and I shall deliver you and you, you will honour me. So the question is this. How do we glorify God that he is a God that absolutely has no need and has all the resources within himself? The answer is by not being his benefactor. We cannot do anything to please God. We can't do anything by pleasing our grandchildren to please God. But as supplicants, by calling on him helplessly for his help, and we in turn get delivered and he gets the glory. I will deliver you and you will glorify me. You see, it's a total switch of men's ideas that we must run around and try and impress our grandchildren that we might leave a good impression when we pass away that granddad was good. We are nothing. We are totally reliant on God. And the moment we're reliant on God, the grandchildren can see the reliance on God and the children come to God. And the only thing the kids know is that you passed on the baton of the word of God. Not that you ran around buying lollies and Christmas presents and granddad's good, as I heard in a sermon last week. This is a completely different mind switch of what God is like. He has no need of you running around being good. He is so sufficient. And you know, the bigger God becomes, the more sufficient he becomes, and the less he needs me. Then the more resourceful he can be for us, and the more God can pour out his riches from glory on high, and the more glorious he looks, and we find our joy in him. This, folks, is how God operates completely opposite to men's woke look at how God should be pleased because he wants us to experience his fullness and his full self-sufficiency he wants us to experience his inexhaustible supply of grace and favour to which we do not deserve and Isaiah 40 28 do you not know this have you not heard the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. And the consequences of this part of the verse is simply this. He gives us strength to the weary and increases power to the weak, and even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who have their hope and trust in the Lord will renew their strength and soar with wings like eagles. God is waiting for us to be helpless and depending on his sufficiency. So the inexhaustible hand of God is great news for the gospel, for the exhausted, for the, no, for the people that are thirsty, for the people that are dry, for the people that are weary, for the lost. The inexhaustible, self-sufficient one, overflowing God. For the eyes of the Lord is looking throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed and bent towards our Saviour. God is on the lookout for those that are humble enough, weak enough, non-self-sufficient, so that he can show his hand strong and come through. Since ancient times no one has heard, no ear has even perceived, no eye has even seen, any God besides you who acts on the behalf of those who wait for him. God's uniqueness. No one has a God like this. Who is like thee? No one. In his overflowing grace and his fullness, he delights to work for us. Not the other way round that we should work 
and please God by pleasing our grandchildren and leaving behind a great testimony. Our testimony comes from being baptised in the Holy Spirit and serving God. It flows through us. And the children, the grandchildren have a desire to seek the living God. And the children have the word of God written in their hearts. That's the best gift you can give your grandchildren. It's this overflowing, inexhaustible self-sufficiency of God where we get our salvation by sending his son to the cross for people just like you and I that had absolutely no way of escape and had no way of even saving ourselves and no way of working our way out of this mess that we are born in. None. Come all ye that are thirsty. Come to the waters and you'll have no money. Come and buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money, and without cost. This is the God that we have. I exist to those that need and recognise their helplessness. I don't come to those that have all the answers. I don't have come to those that can have all the resources. I come to those that come and are helpless and recognise that they are nothing and they need to turn and trust wholly and solely in the one that came to rescue mankind. And I exist with no help wanted. Quite often you'll see a sign outside a building, help wanted. God has no such sign, help wanted. No help demanded. I exist to be inexhaustible. I exist solely to those that will put their faith and confidence in him. And that, folks, is really the glory of the truth of the gospel. Because simply everything else runs out. But God never runs out. God never runs dry. His hand is never short. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up. We used to sing this song years ago. Come and quench this thirsting soul of mine. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. You know, there's millions of people in this world who are craving for the pleasures of life that money can buy. But Jesus says, come to me. Money can't buy. Come with no money. But none can match the wondrous treasure that one can find in the saviour of the world that says, fill my cup, fill it up, make me whole. Come and quench the thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Christ to us to offer us living water gushing up into eternity and eternal life. Fill us, Lord, to overflowing with the water of your spirit and well that never, ever shall run dry. We want to drink deeply so that we may grow in faith and love and have an understanding of the scriptures and your ever-ending love and fountain that never dry, runs dry. Amen.